It's all about us submitting our will to that of God. He said, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way, which does what? Which leadeth unto life. Uh-huh. And few there be that find. He said, ain't but going to be a few that's going to find. And that's why he said, you're going to be hated by men for my name's sake. Because when you serve God, you are contrary to the world. And sometimes when you do it, they look at you and you convict others. And they come against you because of that. Because they'll say, well, you don't have to do that. But then at the same time, they see you doing it. And that pricks them, pricks their conscience. But drop down to verse number 21 and go ahead. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now people are seeking the Lord here. He's talking about people who are seeking him. Call they self-serving him. He said, but not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. They serve him, but he's letting them know it's not going to profit you. Because they're serving him in accordance to what? To the commandments of men, not the commandments of God. He said, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But what? But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And again, to do God's will is to be obedient unto his commandments. The will of God is that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But understand that the God we serve is not a respecter of person. He's offering salvation, but you're going to deliver yourself. Just as Jude gave the example, when he brought Israel up out of the land of Egypt, brought them into the wilderness, and then destroyed those that believed not. The angels that left their first habitate, their state, left their first habitation. He's reserved them under the chains of darkness. For what? That day of judgment. They're going into the lake of fire. Satan and all the angels that he drew away with him. And then when you look at Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, destroy them all with fire, symbolizing what is to take place on the final day of judgment. But showing us what it is that we have to do. You're going to serve God according to how he demands or commands us to or suffer the consequences. He is not going to be accepting of anything else. See, to do wrong and then say, well, I had right intentions, does not eradicate or erase the wrong. Does not do away with it. Does not matter about one's intentions. What matters with God is being obedient to his commandments, and he made them clear. Had them delivered. He said, so not everybody that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, because what's going to happen? Many will say to me in that day. Not a few. He said, huh? He said, what? He said, many going to say to me in that day. What? Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Uh-huh. And in thy name have cast out death. These people got some works. They think. They're not talking about they've been standing on the corner. Or they were the ills of society. They were the murderers, the thieves, the prostitutes. They're not talking about that. They're saying, Lord, that we not prophesied or preached in your name. And in our name, we didn't cast out devils. And in your name, done what? And in our name, done many wonderful works. They've been laboring. And what is the Lord going to tell them? And then will I profess unto them, uh -huh. I never knew you. You did never want to hear that. You don't want to hear that. He said, and then I'm a professor to him. I never knew you. Because again, they were proclaiming his name. They were proclaiming the love they had for Jesus. But as he said, their heart was far from me. Because they refused to do whatever the Lord said. What is written in this book? What did Jesus say? If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, evidence your love. See, nobody has to tell you that they love you. You know they love you how? How they treat you. I know my wife loves me not because she said she ain't got to utter a word. It is because how she treats me. I understand clearly how she feels about me. I know that. 
Again, not based on nothing she has to say, but based on the things that she do. It's real simple. It's the same way with the Lord. If you want to show you him that you love him, as he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. It's that simple. But he tell him, he said, I'm going to profess to him I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Turn over to Genesis, the sixth chapter. Because to get to God's kingdom, to obtain his salvation, you got to be obedient to his command. You got to have, as Jesus said, you got to do good. You got to have good works. You got to be righteous. And those things stem from, again, your obedience to God's command. That's what man is going to be judged on. Everybody is going to be judged on that. And God is a fair judge. God is a fair God. See, you might not be the wealthiest man in the world, just like Lazarus, but you can keep God's commandments. You might not have much, but you could have the desire to serve God. Serve him to the best of your ability. See, this is free. Don't cost you nothing. Don't cost you nothing to be a servant of the Lord. What it costs you is your desire. You may be persecuted. You may be talked about. But what matters most? Jesus said, don't fear them that can kill the body. And after that, they can't do nothing else. You fear the one that can kill this body, then cast it in the head. That's the one you got to fear. Fear God. Don't worry about man. Do the best you can to serve him because your whole purpose, if your desire is not in the getting, if it's not in the getting to God's kingdom, then this is just an exercise of futility. That's what it should be all about. I know that's what I want. I know all I want, I've lived this life. I've had my ups and I've had my downs. But when I look at this, the only thing I want is to get into God's kingdom. The best thing that I've found in life is the Word of God. Because that is what will give me eternal life. I love my kids, love my wife, but none, love my family, but none of that, none of that can give me eternal life. You can give me a billion dollars, and I'm still going to die if I don't live until the second coming of the Lord. That's not going to give me eternal life. The only thing that's going to give me me to eternal life is me being obedient to the commandments of God. That's what this should be all about. Serving God so you can get into his kingdom. And to get deliverance from God, he's demonstrated. you got to be obedient to him. Six, Genesis 6 and verse number 5. Because the Lord here is getting ready to destroy the world. And we're going to see an example of God's Offering deliverance here. We're going to see what this individual had to do in order to be a recipient of that deliverance. Six. And pick it up at verse number five. Six and five. Go ahead when you get there. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Uh -huh. and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Again. The intent of man was to do that which was wrong. But go ahead. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. It grieved him. Go ahead. It grieved him at his heart. He was sorry for that. But what? And the Lord said, uh -huh. I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Go ahead. Both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. Because they were all created for man. Everything was created for this man. And the Lord said, I'm going to destroy it all. Include man himself. Why? Wow. For it repented me that I have made. So man here is in need of deliverance, is he not? Because the danger that he faced, God's getting ready to destroy him, getting ready to destroy the world. But what happened? But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Drop down to verse number 13 because it say Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. We're going to see if grace in itself was enough. If Noah was just delivered because, again, because God found, because he found grace in the eyes of God. Drop down to verse number 13 and go ahead. 
And God said unto them, uh -huh. The end of all flesh has come before me. What? For the earth is filled with violence through them. And what's going to happen? And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. God is a merciful God because he will tell you beforehand what, is he, what he is going to do. And then you decide, you make the choice whether or not you're going to be delivered. So he let Noah know he was, what he was going to do concerning the earth. Concerning the world, he said, I'm gonna destroy them. With, he said, The end of all flesh is become before me. He told them the reason why he's gonna destroy the world. He said, I'm destroying them with the earth. What did he tell Noah to do? Go ahead, make the an ark of gopher wood. He didn't tell him, Don't worry, Noah, because you are in the grace. He said, Look, I'm gonna destroy the world. Therefore, you make you an ark of gopher wood. Go ahead. Room shalt thou make in the ark. Uh -huh. And shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. Go ahead. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it up. Uh -huh. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. Now, God has provided Noah with the means of his deliverance. And he is specific, is he not? And telling Noah exactly what it is that he has to do. Drop down to 17 and go ahead. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh. Again, this is what Noah needs deliverance from. The Lord is letting him know. He said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh. Go ahead. Where it is the breath of life. Uh-huh. Come under heaven. And everything that is in the earth shall die. Drop down to verse number 22. And what did Noah do? Thus did Noah. Uh -huh. According to all that God commanded him, so did he. Because Noah's obedience is what's going to enable Noah to receive God's salvation. His obedience to God is what's going to enable Noah to be delivered. Pick it up. Go right into the seventh chapter of Genesis. Because we're going to see that Noah obeyed God and as a result, he was delivered along with his family. Go ahead. And the, Lord, and, one. and the Lord said unto Noah, uh -huh. Come thou and all thy house into the ark. Go ahead. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Now he can say that. He said, look. He told Noah, he said, Come thou and all thy house into where? Into the ark. Because Noah did what? He built that ark that the Lord had told him to do. Had he not? He said, for thee I've seen righteous before me in this generation. And he, just, he demonstrated his righteousness. Because again, being obedient to God's commandments, that's what constitutes your righteousness. Go ahead. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by self. Uh-huh. The male and his female. Go ahead. And of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. And again, what that demonstrated is that no one knew what was clean and what was unclean. God had told that or revealed that unto Noah well before it was given in Leviticus, the 11th chapter, what, one, what people refer to as the dietary law. That's when it was officially given unto Israel. But God had revealed it unto Noah. He said, of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of the beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. 14 and 2. And the reason why he was going to do the clean by sevens is because those are going to be sacrificed to the Lord. But I ain't dealing with that. Verse 3 and go ahead. The fowls also of the air by sevens. Uh -huh. The male and the female. To keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. Go ahead. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. Uh huh. And every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. So the Lord further instructed Noah. What did Noah do? And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. Not what he thought. It said he did according to all that God had commanded him. Drop down to 11 and go ahead. In the 600th year of Noah's life, uh -huh. the second month, the 17th day of the month, Go ahead. the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened. So what God had proclaimed is coming to pass. Go ahead. And the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. Well, what about Noah? In the self same day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, uh -huh. the sons of Noah, Go ahead. And Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them into the earth. 
Again, 